Hello and welcome to True Crime Diary, a light-hearted podcast on a serious subject. Every two weeks we look back through true crime stories to discuss an event that took place on this week in history. I'm your host Mark Decano and with me as always are my friends Jed Lester. Hello. And Rue Turner. Hello. So the date we're looking at this episode is the 12th of April. And in 1921, Inspector Jubelin of the Paris Brigade Mobile or as we would call it, the flying squad, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> arrested one Monsieur Fremier on suspicion of murder. Monsieur Fremier was actually better known as Henri Désiré Landru, locally known as the Bluebeard of Gambay. And he was arrested and charged with the murders of 11 people. Arr! <laughs> Jim Ladd. Um, he's a pirate, isn't he? No, he's not a pirate. Why do I think, and I'm going to stick my neck out most of the listeners <laughs> think that he's a pirate because the only pirate that anyone's heard of is Blackbeard I've heard of Bluebeard anybody's Bluebeard name I've heard of Bluebeard in no other context than what, what even is this context what's he done he's Killed a serial people. murderer is he yeah and anyone whose got... name ends in beard is probably a pirate <laughs> know, yeah yeah Mary Beard <laughs> Who's Ma- Classical Mary pirate. Mid, yeah. Who's Mary? Oh, Mary Vitt. Yeah, that's yeah. Mary Vitt. Sorry, I was Classic. getting confused. A pi- I thought she was a pirate. <laughs> um, what era are we talking about? Pirate times. Well, as, as I stated, 1921. <laughs> what would you say pirate times are? Early 17th I'm gonna, century. Yeah, I was going to say age. that. Yeah. The golden age. That's, that's what it's called. <laughs> it's not, is it? Yeah, yeah. The golden, the age, golden of age of pirating. That's what they called it. The golden beard of pirating. <laughs> Um, That's when you've got people like Blackbeard, yes, and um, Charles Vane and Pugwash, Pugwash, <laughs> all the other fam- um, Jack Sparrow, all the other famous pirates. Oh uh, yeah, uh, right. Okay. Well, there you go. He's not a pirate. Everyone, he's not a pirate. Apparently, Arr. so Henri Landru, he killed that we know of ten women and one teenage boy. Right, but he is also estimated to have killed many hundreds of people. Blimey, prolific. Right. And he's called, referred to as the Bluebeard of Gumbai. Was he known of that, by that name due to history or at the time? He was known that at the time because of history. But not by his wives. But not by his wives. <laughs> so it's not an after the uh, moment uh, in history, I mean, name. It's He, he wasn't at the time called... Old Killer Henry. <laughs> okay, yeah. Are you marrying old wife Killer <laughs> Henry? Meaning, in the intervening years, in the hundred years, it's nearly exactly a hundred years or something, isn't it? Yes, yeah. He hasn't come to be. He was known, known as, as the Bluebeard of Gambai after his arrest. At right, the time, okay. He would have been known as the Bluebeard. Um, in fact, he's become. He's probably as famous for being Bluebeard as Bluebeard because he was named after a folkloric character from france oh right oh, who's given this that particular bluebeard he was a philanderer as well was he well who was yeah, the first yeah. one then? well it's a as i say it's a folklore it's all very confusing it's a t- okay so there was, was he a pirate he was not a pirate no so as a character for folklore i'll try and make it as brief as possible so like a, yeah <laughs> <laughs> the story goes more or less i mean there will be variations because it's many many years old the story goes once upon a time there was a very rich man who had such a bright blue beard that all who knew him called him Bluebeard. This this character is a rich guy, he lives in like a castle and um a Chateau. He, chateau, thank What's you. The translation, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a mizzle. Grand. <laughs> and he uh, he has had many wives who've all mysteriously disappeared. Oh, right. Okay. okay. Um, and then on one day he takes a, an, another wife, a young maiden from the village. She goes to live with him in his castle, and he's going to go away. He leaves her the keys to the castle. Said the keys will open every door keys. in the castle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Keys, except for that one. Except for one room, <laughs> which he may never go in. There's always one. Is that the rules? It's in the basement. You know, you can't go in that one. Okay. I'll give you the key to unlock every door yeah, in yeah, the yeah. castle, but don't go in that. Are we one. talking about? I could the just ori- take that key off the key ring. Yeah, but I'm and not, not gonna... say this sentence. <laughs> and not, not say it. Yeah. We're talking about the original. This is the apparent the, the folkloric yeah, tale. Mine, yeah. Yeah. Um, so he goes away, and the girl has a party and shows all her friends around the house. And this is the script of a Hammer horror, isn't yeah, it? Basically. <laughs> all, all, all horror films. Yeah. So she goes into the, the basement room. She can't control her, her uh, intrigue. Intrigue. Yep. Mm-hmm. And she opens the door, and sure enough, the keys work. She goes in. The room, <laughs> oh, right, is, yeah, yeah. the room is full of blood, and 
Mm. Bodies of wives hanging on chains on the wall. He doesn't and clean up after himself, does he? Uh, he puts them all in one room. It's though. a story, yeah. isn't it? Outside, outside. I was gonna, it's a story, isn't this it? This is just a story. I was going to okay. say, it would smell. Right. But, yeah, yeah, it would absolutely stink. Yeah. Yeah. And it wouldn't be covered in blood. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. No. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> just, yeah. But anyway. Get on with it. Then, <laughs> Bluebeard comes back oh, yeah, early, yeah. as sort of mm-hmm. they all do. Sacre bleu. <laughs> Beard. <laughs> and they... Beard. <laughs> Sacre barbe. <laughs> And then he finds out what's happened and he's going to kill her and then all of her sisters and family turn up and beat him to death. Oh. Oh. oh I didn't know he was going that direction. <laughs> yeah. Because Why of this the, tale, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, the, yeah. the, the, the name Bluebeard has okay. come to mean basically Someone a who's, serial philanderer yes, right, uh, or, okay. you know, um, that sort of Well, thing. so it was the perfect nickname for the real life pirate. Although, <laughs> although, it's not a although Bluebeard, our Bluebeard, Henri Landru, he did not marry any of the women that he killed. They weren't his wives. Oh, okay. He just killed them. Right. What were you going to ask? Uh, no, I was just going to ask. The only thing when you were telling that story, the only thing I was thinking about is things that haven't technological evolution hasn't changed uh, over the intervening years. And I was just thinking of keys. <laughs> Keys. Yeah. Keep, keys are rubbish. Still got keys. I Still got keys. Key, keys then. Key technology has yeah. moved on. I know it has, but generally, a bit. keys are keys, aren't they? Keys and are I can't keys. believe we still get keys. Yeah. No, it's true. This keys are rubbish. <laughs> keys are what? Rubbish. Keys are rubbish. They really are <laughs> the, rubbish. Um, it's, uh, I know it's a bit of a tangent, but keys... <laughs> if you've ever watched anyone bump a barrel lock, you would never worry about locking any doors. Key. If you think about 100 Just, years ago... And you think of okay. everyday technology and what people would be. Yeah. The keys were top latest key, technology. Keys then. and bicycles <laughs> have not changed at all. Why haven't they changed? Keys are the same. Anyway. Yeah. So Landru was married to uh, his wife uh, Marie Catherine. They uh, met in 1887. She was his cousin. Which wasn't so uncommon in those days. Is she no. first cousin? Uh, that's my understanding, yes. Okay. Um, they had a child before they were married, one illegitimate child. They got married, and then they had three more children. I like children. For breakfast? <laughs> mm. With his cousin? Yeah. With his cousin, yeah. Is that bad? Yeah. Is it? First cousin, not good. Not so great. Yeah. Only, no. only, only three of them were, were, had webbed feet. <laughs> 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 and the other one had web webbed eyes. foot because <laughs> <laughs> he only had one leg one huge one leg, leg one huge leg yeah <laughs> mono leg <laughs> mono leg <laughs> um, now she described him as a model husband right okay well that's good PR well if, um, if you're the kind of person who marries your first cousin you may not be the best judge well yeah I say. His ambition was to become a great inventor. Right. And in 1898, he designed a motorbike. Good grief. Really? Yeah. It's a motorcycle. Two-cylinder, chain drive, one squeaky wheel on the front. 1898. Hadn't it been invented already? And yeah. the bike obviously a... existed. The bicycle obviously existed already. But Yeah, that was from like 1700. Yeah. The uh, bone the shaker. Bike. It was invented 1894. There you go. <laughs> I've invented the laptop. <laughs> Here it is. He invented a, a motorbike. Okay, not all right. Motor. Motor. I mean, that's not an invention. That's a, <laughs> that's a, that's a build. Yeah, that's exactly. something he made. He created his, something of his own design that okay. was a motorbike. Yeah. A bike? Yeah. It was motorised. Motorised bike. Okay. But having invented the, the Landru, as he called okay. his motorbike, oh, yeah, yeah. he then basically conned people into investing in the ah. into the company. So that's the invention, really. The invention is the, yeah. the con. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Okay. Why is that a con? Well, because he never had any intention of manufacturing it. Right. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Basically, he did that. He also designed a new uh, railway line uh, and, a, and an automatic toy for children. You know, for kids. I don't know what that was, what it, what it looks like, or what it represents. You know, shut okay. to think. But again, it's basically just conning people and saying, "Look, I've made a yeah. thing." But I, I mean, everyone will be massively impressed by those things. But at the time, yeah, yeah, I'm talking yeah, about for sure. Railway lines 
kind of what did exist. You know, that's not, that's like not an invention of his. Well, again, he didn't invent the railway. He just <laughs> he's come up with an idea and a design for a suburban railway on the one mm-hmm. side of Paris. Saying, I'm going to do oh, this. A railway scheme. Give me your money. A scheme. Yeah. He's a schemer. Okay. All right. I'm not a schemer. By the time of the early 1900s, he's pretty much on the run from police and <laughs> hiding oh, right. away. Oh, right. Okay, so they're, they're on to him already at this point. Yeah, because he's, he's a fraudster, yeah. and nicked a yeah. load of money. Yeah. Investment money. Yeah. He's, um, so by 1904, he's arrested in Paris. Um, he, he, he was arrested because he fell over in the street while running away from a bank that he tried to defraud. <laughs> <laughs> he said, like, oh, I've fallen. And the police were like, ah, ah, you're nicked. Get him. Oi! Um, and he was put into a uh, Sante prison, where apparently he tried to commit suicide, although the likelihood is that he, he tried to be caught in the commission of suicide, i.e. he sort of stood next to a rope. <laughs> and when a guard came around the corner, he went, oh, I was about to do this. <laughs> Why does that put you in a different wing of, I don't know, being unstable the mad wing or something well yeah it might have got him into the, the hospital yes right than, yeah okay which is less right. so, maybe less secure sure yeah yeah he was examined by a psychiatrist who said he was on the brink of madness but right. they fell short of ever actually saying he was mad he wasn't <laughs> he wasn't kind of insane but okay. again that might be just as much as, as what he wanted mm-hmm. to believe as totally anything else. he's investing in his own future <laughs> by pretending to be mad and starting to build the narrative yeah. So he was two years in prison, and then he was in and out of prison again for the next sort of ten years. Gosh. Now he got a great idea in 1909. <laughs> I say great idea. Yep. He got an idea. He, he he posed as a wealthy businessman, and he basically tried to get a wealthy widow to hand over all her money <laughs> oh, yeah. by in like a prenup. Sort of it's like funny, a, funny, yeah, it's prenup. Sort of like an anti prenup. Yeah, Usually like prenups a, are defending the money that someone yeah, has. Yeah, it's kind of like a yeah, I'll, it's a, a a dowry. Right, yes. kind of like I'll, no, yeah. I'll marry you if you give me all your money. Yeah, okay, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but again, he got caught in this swindle by her. Yeah, and he did another three years, and his father committed suicide while he was in prison. While um, Landry was in prison. <laughs> It's, yeah, a, yeah. It's, a, it's suggested by Landrieu's mother that his father committed suicide in exasperation because of his his son being a, right. a ne'er do well. Yes, which I find slightly odd. I mean, it was described that he had a fairly idyllic childhood, mm. but yeah. his mother what, didn't his mother die? Well, eventually, <laughs> his father committed suicide, but that couldn't possibly be because of his criminal. It's a bit. Activity. Well, that's what she. That's what she suggests. I mean, it's. A, I mean, to me, that suggests not an idyllic childhood. I well, mean, they were they were Catholic, so maybe that was just too much shame. <laughs> his childhood might have been idyllic because right. you know he was doing quite well. As he was an again Catholic upbringing, he was an altar boy at the church. He had a. He was a had got a sub deacon post. I'm not very well versed in hierarchy of the church, but so he was an altar boy under the deacon. Hey, hey. <laughs> It all seemed to be going quite well. That it was a poor upbringing. His parents were, uh, I think, one was a, a laundress, another was a stoker or something like that. So they were working. They were labourers. Yeah. Yep. And he was doing quite well in the church. But then he got this idea to start swindling people out of everything. I mean, you know, if he um, didn't have any money, you know. and it's, yeah, yeah. I and mean, as far as his, what he felt for his family, it's t- when he came out of prison, he um, stole uh, twelve thousand francs. Um, which is about which is forty about grand, f- fil- fifty thousand yeah. pounds from his family. Oh, all right, so that's fine. the money that his father left for the all right, fine. for the, his wife and four children for their well-being. But you know what they say: home is where the money is. And yep. he took all the money in. Oh, uh, okay. carpet. So that's not the nicest. No, he's not a great guy. We're learning. <laughs> Uh, and then he did an, an, another huge swindle um, just before the outbreak of war where he claimed to be starting a car factory and he got people to invest in that and um, he got about 35, 36,000 francs for First that. investors. So a couple of hundred grand, yeah. Wow. wow. And he went on the run and then okay. came the war. The WWI. First. Yes, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. And that's war! Drive through every village and town, wake every citizen up hill and down, tell them the enemy comes from afar with a hey na na and a hot cha cha. So, just quickly, 
explain what happened to Paris in the First World War much, in the sense that it wasn't occupied. It wasn't occupied. No, the Germans were at the, the gates, as they yeah. say. The enemy was at the gates. So only, the only thing it did was scupper his ability to get investors, because obviously everyone was concentrating on yeah. the massive war. Well, the war was what he profited the most from. Right. There well, being there having been a war. There's always war mongers. Yeah. Bear in mind, straight, uh, first of all, in 1914, he's gone on the run. War breaking out. Police have got more important things. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was convicted in absentia while he's on the run and sentenced to four years hard labour for the car factory for all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but so if they ever caught up with him, that's immediately four years hard labour. Yeah, four years hard labour about 8,000 miles away on a South Pacific island. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, this is those... Oh, the French the, yeah, Empire. the islands, they're about half the width of Australia to the east of Australia. Yes. Sure, yeah. I mean, we're talking about area off the coast of New Zealand, so like Vanuatu and those yeah, right, southern right, right. Pacific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. French Polynesia. French Polynesia. It's on the <laughs> island of New Caledonia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> New Scotland. So hang on, he that's where he would have gone. Had he been, if had he been, been captured, yeah. he but he hadn't there, but he wasn't captured. He would have been breaking rocks in the South Pacific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Wipe it in half here, boss. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> he decides to settle down. He's found himself a place in a town called uh, Chantilly, which mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. just north of Paris, where they make lace. Yep. By yeah. the, <laughs> famously. By the roll. Yeah. And they all have a pretty They're face. very ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and a ponytail hanging down. Now, he finds a, a young lady named Jean Couchet, mm-hmm. who had been widowed. Now, this is where he falls upon his uh, greatest scheme. He starts reaching out to widows and prospective. <laughs> How did you do that? Well, because... because widows of, for sale? Through Lonely Hearts advertisements. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Really? He's one of the original Lonely Hearts killers. Wow. Gosh. Is this post-war now? This is during the war and post-war. Right. So it starts off during the war. Now, bearing in mind that... Lots of widows during the war. You have seen the women. None of them are women. They're widows. The place has only widows. Widows needed. Widows needed. Is that his... <laughs> <That's> his <idea. laughs> Widow seeks similar something. Yeah. So his latest scheme then was to, to woo mm-hmm. widows and then liberate them of their, the burden of their wealth. <laughs> Okay. And then apparently he would then do away with them. Right. Charming. The first few have got to be tough. I I can't help but think this. I mean, when you're getting into the hundreds, All of them. I'm sure he's well practiced. So did he get into the, the hundreds? Yeah. Well, allegedly. It's oh, alleged God. that he, yeah, it's alleged that there were hundreds. I thought you said I think he was. I think he was um, convicted of it. Like, yeah. Um, wow. Oh, God. I mean, that's like. Obviously, I don't know the time scale, but which is probably easily one a month, but probably more than one a month. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's quite on the basis that he w- wanted to woo them for only one money-based thing. Mm. Yeah. That's once you've quick, got the money, or work. you're at risk of discovery, you've then got to get rid of them. Sure, yeah. It was while Landru was living with Jean Couchet um, under the name. Raymond Diard, um, that was when World broke out in August 1914. She thought that he, Alondru, would look after her and her illegitimate teenage son, André. Mm-hmm. But? But no. Quite the opposite. <laughs> now, apparently she found out that he was on the run from the police. Okay. And she found, like, some various fake papers and... Cause she found out, she went to confront him, but then pretty much was never seen again. <laughs> So maybe she did confront him. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. yeah well, and like then was never did, seen yeah. again. Yeah, this is perhaps a, a bit of my cultural ignorance, but if you have a wealthy single woman, what does she need him for? Yeah, I know, She's yeah. got plenty of money. I know what you mean. You might might be right. It might be cultural, but also of the time period. But I think because she had a le- illegitimate son, so yes. the patriarch would lend legitimacy. Uh, and the notion of uh, at the as you say at the time, the notion of just single woman is mm. why aren't you married that kind of yeah. and, thing uh, hanging perhaps, over I guess them. perhaps he was a very genuinely nice guy to be around he even if he been, did cause... kill you in the end <laughs> he might have just been fun to be about you know? he must have been because he had nothing that they needed yeah basically. he had, didn't really have any although he had he did have money he had other women's money <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah 
there's a lot of argument that his conviction was unsound on the basis that he was convicted of stealing all their money when it's been argued that a lot of these women didn't actually have any money hmm. but that would only just mean he was uh, killing for the joy of it yes <laughs> yeah well that changes it entirely <laughs> that, that, that makes it arguably it, worse yeah because he had Not arguably no, massively <laughs> he had no motive well uh, yeah I mean that just meant he was a total psychopath. Yeah, no motivation. Not, not that taking their money is a justification for having killed them. It doesn't make it no. any worse no, or but better. It's, it's but ar- he had a, again, arguably, an angle. <laughs> it's arguably rational. He had a reason behind it. It wasn't just a, a lunatic. Yes, okay. even though he then... Even though he was mad enough to kill yeah. someone with their money. But, you know, that, that, that does happen, I, I understand. Now, young Andre... Um, he found yes. out to his joy that his recruitment to the army, which he was underage for, had been brought forward by two years. In 1915, he was going to go into to the front. Basically. Mm. So what age was he at that point? 17. 17. 17. So typically you'd go in at 19. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, or 18 would be an adult, so, I guess. So I 17. He was, he was 17 going at to the this front. point, and he was told that his recruitment could oh. be brought forward just mm. because somebody died. Mm. But um, That's pretty frightening. Now, he wrote to an, um, an uncle with the excitement about going off to war, and that was the last anyone ever heard of him. He didn't make it to the to the front. So, what? what hang on. What, what are we suggesting happened there? He didn't He didn't get, join the army at all? Well, we know that Couchet, uh, yes. Jean Couchet, was alive in uh, January. Uh, sorry, alive at Christmas for sure. And we know that Andre wrote to his uncle in January 1915. So it's uh, thereabouts at that time that they both would have been mm. killed. So Probably what, at the same yeah. time or thereabouts. So either he he could one of them found, witnessed the other one. Well, yeah, blah, blah, blah. one witnessed right, the yeah, other. Okay. Or, uh, uh, or that's actually murder, one of the worst crimes of all. So also illegal. So what was the net result of him killing those two? What did he gain? Because they they weren't were they married or they didn't they marry married, or anything, no. so no. he just had. He would have only got whatever they had with them at the time. But like I say, there's contention about whether they had anything anyway. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. on one hand, they're being told, said, that, "Oh, you killed her for her money," and the other side, they're saying, "Well, she didn't have any money." So we so don't I, really I, know. I, didn't, I just killed her. <laughs> I just love to kill. <laughs> yeah. It's just a fatal romantic. Sounds very French. <laughs> <laughs> So, subsequent to this, there were a number of, let's call them... Further. A number of... Further. Further. Deaths. Yes. It's not very clear about when he met them, but or how long he was with them, or whether they were supposedly engaged or not engaged, but we were talking about a number of people that he would woo. He would find them through, again, Lonely Hearts advertisements. He killed, over the subsequent four, four and a half years, uh, another nine women. All in the same circumstance basically yeah they would be connected to him in some way or form because they answered of, of the, being together. the ad yeah yep. and then they would simply disappear and never be seen or heard from again so hang on what did you say over the time period four four and a half years or so yeah up to about 1919 I was going to say m- meaning uh, the war's ended by now yes yeah but the fallout well, yeah, it's I mean, still again, still. so by 1919, you've still got the aftermath of now all the people who are going to be killed. Now what do we do? Yeah, yeah. And you've got a land of widows. Hmm. Yeah. I've been to the Somme. Yeah, I know you have. Yeah, yeah. My great-grandfather's buried on the Somme. Oh, I see. Gosh. Head, and you found stone. it? Found it, yeah, yeah. Wow. So he's got a full-on It's got a Commonwealth on... headstone with a full name on it, yeah. Wow, wow. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Consider the millions who... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he a hundred percent French? Uh, he would have been French. Yeah, he lived. He was born in France. Yes, lived, he lived in France. Lived in London. And he died. In <laughs> he lived in London. He's French. Oh, okay. He ran a shop called Decano and Son, uh, which sold um, gramophones and bicycles. And it was in the heart That's of pretty good. London's current West End. Really, where there is now a Starbucks. Really, obviously, as in as in all shops. Oh wow! But it was, I think, Good Street. Yeah, Good yeah. Street in oh, well, Theatre yeah. Land in West London, yeah. So that would have been Decano and Son Bicycle and Gramophone Shop. That's excellent. And so he, is is Decano a place? So <laughs> Decano. No, yeah. I think it's because it's from the Pas de Calais. So I think it has a, like a Dutch overtone, like Duke. Oh, right, okay. Duke. Um, and there's lots of different. Uh, there's like Duquesa and Ducanoy and all sorts. The, the end of it changes a lot. All right. So, so I think it's something. Ducano, Ducaville. I think it's something to do with the, like a, a duchy that would have been in that historically in the Ile de France. So, nice. There you go. So I'm a duke, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> right, heard it here first. 
anyway, he did. So, of course, now it's post-war. You've got all the eligible males have all been killed. Yep. The police force is depleted because a lot of them went to war mm. and the rest of them got like a one policeman for the whole town. Yep. So no one's looking for him. <laughs> no one's chasing him. No. Even for his four years yes. of mm. hard labour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he's over no one's even got time to look to find the paperwork that suggests he might be. Yeah. Yeah. Now, don't forget, of course, that he's married with kids. I'd forgotten. <laughs> so as, for, as had he. Yeah. So for all his philandering, um, his wife and arguably children have been, I wouldn't say by his side, but have been looking after protecting him. Right. So there was a question later on about how much they knew, didn't know. Sure. She, Marie Christine, definitely helped him flog stolen stuff right. that he nicked from these okay. women. Whether she knew he killed them or not, I don't know. Or well, nobody knows, but um, but she fenced. She was definitely in on something. Yeah. Right, right. So she would be looking after him. So if anyone did turn around and say, "Where's your husband hiding from?" Yeah, the police. She goes, she'd have. Oh, I don't know. She'd nothing. have known. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know why they're talking like cockneys. No, no. I don't know why <laughs> je ne, je ne sais pas. <laughs> she would have said, or something along those lines. He moved to a place called Venuier which is um, about 35 kilometres north of Paris. Mm -hmm. And then later he moved to Gambai, I think about maybe halfway through the war. He finds lodging in a house called, the, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, they're called the Villa Trice or the Villa Trick, which is outside the town of Gambai, hence the name Bluebeard of Gambai. Oh, right, okay. yeah, yeah. So, I somehow imagined that he was continuously travelling and slaughtering as he went. Presumably. Not, like, stuck in a house and... Knocking them off in the house. Oh, I, mean, so I didn't, I didn't they, imagine him. they came to him. Yeah, I didn't think that he'd be going to a town and then just killing women in the yeah, town. Yeah, but he's yeah, he's going for women with money, meaning he mm. goes to them, presumably. Is that well? Again, he's got deal? he's he's got a new alias every time. Uh, he is yeah, staying he has. in a house, but he's again. This is it's not like everyone's asking for his identity papers every five minutes. No, of course he's. Yeah, he's yeah. A, Adverts in Lonely Hearts publications, he meets them, he woos them. Mm. So they're talking, they're chatting, and people see him around. No, no one's got any reason to be suspicious. <laughs> uh, Marie. And then just one day they're, they're gone. Right, right. Oh, they you went think away. word would get round. I know, yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, society and socialising was Where far more gone? important then. People Absolutely, were talking yeah. to each other all day and long. And they would see every, There's each no, other. You know, no Instagram, there's no messaging. You go and you speak to but people. But you'd know. You what exchange the news, you know. Unless they're rural farm houses or something. But or even more a so. A single no. woman wouldn't <laughs> yeah. be living. You're in more a anonymous in a city than you are in the country. Yeah. Right, yeah, True. well, I suppose. Because there's only yeah. three of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where's a third of our town gone? Oh, yeah. When, you, I, when I lived in that, Scotland, I knew everyone within five miles of my house. Both what? of them. How many were? <laughs> yeah, both of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the nearest house was literally a one and a half kilometres away. So there weren't many... You didn't know many people, but you knew no, them all. but I knew everyone, yeah. Right. You were aware of them. But I was aware of them, Still yeah. didn't talk to them. No. But they hated you. <laughs> Englishman, come here. <laughs> what accent's that? Is that your French Welsh. accent? <laughs> pirate. Welsh pirate. <laughs> Welsh pirate. <laughs> so Londres is currently going by the name Georges Fremier. Sounds like a serial killer name. Is that what you are? One of Landry's victims, named Celestine Bousson, had a young sister called Marie Lacoste. Good pronunciation. Thank right. you. What? Different surnames. One of them's married. Married, yeah. Now, she did not like Landry from the minute she met him. Right. With her sister's disappearance. She knows a wrong end. She did not like Landry. And the moment uh, Celestine Bousson disappeared, she started to do her own investigation. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So Lacoste then was pretty sure something untoward had happened. Right, yeah, yeah. Landru thought he'd uh, cover himself by writing some postcards to the, the young sister, sent two postcards from Gambai, uh, signing Celestine's name. Obviously, had, she knew immediately Never there wasn't her the handwriting. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. So she knew straight away. He's that getting he clumsy at the end, isn't he? Yeah. Um, and she wrote to the mayor, in fact, and it, to say, you've got this man living in your town, Gambai, who's basically a swindler and a liar and possibly a killer, and you know, to investigate it. And he denied any, the mayor denied any knowledge, but he very much knew who this man was. God. 
So he he knew him as by another name. He knew him as Raoul Dupont. So he's just using right. aliases left, right, and centre. But what he did do is he put her in touch with someone else who'd made inquiries. And it turns out that there's someone else who'd made inquiries. One of their relatives had been killed. By yeah, okay. So now you've got two people following up family members. <laughs> but you've also got a mayor who's not interested. He's a bit of a dick. Yeah. yeah. Why is he not interested? What is it about mayors? It's a total yeah. night. So enter Inspector Jubelin of mayor. the Brigade Mobile. I'm looking for a murderer. Yep. Um, he interviewed both of these people, so Lacoste, the sister, and um, Pella, who was another s- a sister of a previous victim. After the arrest, he put in a report about everything that he'd learned, and he basically <laughs> put, he put it across as though it was his investigation when it was actually... They'd Lacoste brought the evidence, the yeah, yeah. And he said, yeah, oh, I, well, I worked it all out. Sure, I did sure. Everything. But basically, um, it was luck by which Landry was actually finally arrested. Right. He was spotted by a friend of younger sister Lacoste. A friend of hers called Laura Bonneret saw him out with his current mistress of the time, Fernand Segret. Yeah, a new beau. A new a version. New, a new, a new young, a yeah, young yeah, younger yeah. version. Yep. Recognised him, and she went and told her sister, and the sister phoned Berlin and told him. He went to the shop where he'd been seen shopping, and he got a business card, and this had another alias on it, Lucien Guier, on Rue de Rochechoir. Mm-hmm. That's Rue's surname, by the way. <laughs> Rue de Rochechoir. <laughs> Everyone. This is real surname. <laughs> Actual My surname. name is de Rochechoir. <laughs> Rue That's de Rochechoir. Fantastic name. I might change my name to that. <laughs> now, th- this bit's a bit odd because Berlin, now having a name and a name and address, he gets a, he gets a warrant, an arrest warrant for Landru under the name Georges Fremier, which is the name he knows. Yes. But um, he couldn't arrest Lucien Guillet because the name on the warrant didn't cover. Yes, of course. Yeah, so yeah. he went home. Even though they were <laughs> all made up. Yep. So he went home. Okay. Even though it is the same person, and even though both of those people aren't the actual person. Yeah, exactly. Does it, does because it, have, it doesn't say, would I'm arresting like you, that? Henri Landru, alias Georges Fremier. Yeah. It didn't say Lucien Guy. Would it work like that today? No. Yeah, no, I don't think so. No. I'm arresting you, Brian Smith. My name's not Brian. Oh, okay. Bye. Would, would that, would no, that happen? Because you'd, no, because you would arrest them on suspicion of being. It doesn't matter what their name is. <laughs> Take them in and yeah, yeah, yeah. afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. You're the. Oh, That's not forget me. about it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> right, yes. You just arrest them. I'm arresting you <laughs> on suspicion. Yes. I don't care what your yeah. name is. Yeah, right. Well, okay. You can call right. yourself anything you like. Yeah. Let's get down to the station, sort this out down there. <laughs> Go and cop me again. Whatever your name, <laughs> you'll <laughs> fucking nick me, old beauty. Yeah, exactly. Right, OK. So the yeah, next day, obvious. 12th of April, yes. Berlin returns with two other policemen and a new warrant, and then they arrest <laughs> Londru. Have a cigar? No, thanks. Have a warrant? Oh, we get lots of those. Hang on. So he hasn't done a runner? No. That's what an idiot. <laughs> So he knew. Not so not. twenty-four. Hours. We've come to arrest. That's not me. Oh, right. <laughs> twenty-four hours earlier, he he lucked out because of the name. He didn't go back till midday. I mean, he knew they were on. <laughs> I don't know why you're that's shaking some, your head. That summarises it perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, no. I'm here. Silly old. That's it. That's the end of all murderers' careers. It just ends with a. Oh God. The um. He they knew. Keep doing. What it was that you were doing yeah. when you were getting away with it. <laughs> yeah. I know. They I, knew the law. The thing that you're thinking of doing right now isn't something that you've done in the past and the, succeeded. The law was Don't very much yeah. onto him and he didn't run away. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm glad. Confidence. He didn't, but Forget the murders. He's got an outstanding conviction to face. Yeah. Four years' yeah. hard labour. I mean, I presume that didn't come into it in the end. Well, no, they didn't need that one because they, they trumped it. <laughs> yes, of course. What with all the... You yeah. could have made him get him, made him do it, the four years, and four then years, what happened then... to him? Gil... Anyway, carry on. Yeah, I, I Gil. <laughs> Gil. Not Gil. Uh, was he hung by a... Off next to a guillotine? Hung by a blade. <laughs> I think... I don't know what you're going to say about... It's probably... French it's death. France, it's early 20th century. <laughs> so, he was caught. He was caught. Good. Yeah. Well, first of all, he refused that he was the man they were after. He said, I'm That's another not alias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's not me. I'm any number of these other people. I'm Bertrand Dubois. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he said, um, I couldn't kill any of those women because they're all my friends. Oh. 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 See, not, I told you it was romantic. They're not here, though, are they? They're not here. They're so friendly, they ran away, never to be seen again. Mm. Dang. Where'd they go? What they did find, the police, was they found a list in what's called a, a currently called <laughs> People I've <laughs> People Killed. Like the, the dead, a dead pool. <laughs> he, uh, he, he had what was called a, a carnet, which is yes. basically a list of things. A list yeah. of things. A, book, a, little, a little book, yep. a little black book. And basically it had a list of some names. Yeah, he chucked it out the window when they came to arrest him and then they found it out in the street. What's this? <laughs> yeah. There's a list of uh, That's a real kind of names. panicked escape, isn't it? Yeah, embossed <laughs> on the front. Henri Landru's book Ooh, of death. <laughs> chuck your book out. People I've killed by... <laughs> by the blue beard of Gampai. <laughs> this list had the names of victims sure. and like their money their possessions things that he sold they found um, a garage in the uh, in a, a suburb of Paris called uh, Clichy and he had other storage depots as well so he had like furniture and things he basically just gathered up stuff and he was selling stuff off and he had this list and basically he said well look there you go there's their names there's the money you've made out of so they basically they said this is direct evidence of murder you fleeced these people of everything mm-hmm. and you've kept records of it but his argument was he was selling furniture on their behalf. Yep. And that's just, he just made notes of who his customers were. He's a furniture dealer. That's a bit of a call back to the Richmond murder, isn't it? Oh, there you go, you see. He's selling furniture. So knock her off and just sell the furniture. Oh, yeah. They did find some uh, charred bones, but the director of the police laboratory said they were a veritable puzzle. Okay. <laughs> that was his professional. That a that's a quote. Right. I mean, he would have said it in French, one assumes. Meaning he the didn't, puzzle, he didn't know very tall, what was going on. <laughs> Meaning he couldn't make head or tail of yeah. whether they came from the head or, or the, the tail, tail of, <laughs> yeah, a, yeah. of a person. Yeah. Um, he said that um, they came from three or more skeletons, but they couldn't tell if they were male or female. They just, they're human bones, that's all I could make out. Mm. But they were fragments. Bear in mind, you know, there had been bombs in Paris in the First World War. So Plenty. Could have come from anywhere. There were flaws in the case. I've already mentioned that um, some of the people maybe didn't have much money. Some were arguably destitute. Only two or three of them, like Celestine Bousson, who was um, Lacoste's sister, had money. That's um, more of a sort of an adjustment of the MO. It doesn't really make him innocent or guilty, the fact that they yeah. didn't have any money. Yes, but the prosecution's argument that they were it was for, their, it was for profit um, falls down when nine of the 11 people didn't have money yes. to profit by. Oh, yeah, yeah. True. Arguably. He may have believed they had money, Possibly. which is independent of them having money or not. Sure, know? yeah. Yeah. Well, so along with Landru, also his wife and son were arrested um, in hmm. 1919. They were kept in prison for six months before they eventually decided that they couldn't take them to trial. Without. You were suggesting that they, I'm going to quote you, definitely knew. <laughs> Yeah, they so how come the police did, they they just couldn't? Uh, did they they did, also they, definitely well, knew, but couldn't prove it. Yeah, the son, the apprentice, alleged apprentice, inverted commas, he admitted uh, he he helped Henri with uh, gardening work. Right. Now, that whether that means burying bodies, yeah. or or what? I mean, you just, right? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. It's not really clear. So that was the youngest son. The eldest son was arrested for swindling for thefts, but again. It's it's possible that he was involved in covering up by basically lying, but whether he actually knew what he was yes, lying he about, not have known at you all. Know, what could be proved, who knows? Sure. Mm-hmm. We know that his wife Marie Catherine um, forged signatures on to to get savings from the women's accounts, but she might okay. have been complicit in fraud. But again, they didn't have the evidence sure. to do that. But she certainly wasn't part of the murder, or certainly wasn't charged with any part of the murders um, she said that she was innocent of it and they didn't really have, again they didn't have anything to prove it so after six months uh, this is about a year long investigation mm-hmm. after six months of them being in detention they were both released right. there was an argument about Landry whether he was competent to stand trial, whether he was insane mm-hmm. in fact the um, the lawyer for the prosecution in his own in his own case notes argued for both sides, he said he was a savage monster but then on the other hand he also <laughs> Said he was uh, fit to stand trial. 
So either he's a nutter or he isn't. Mm. So he confused his own prosecution. However remiss the prosecutor has been in complimenting me, he at least admits that I have brains. Thank you, monsieur. I have. Well, I always found that as kind of a slightly grey area. Is like, if you're killing people, are you sane? If he's killing them for profit, again, that's a rational... Just because you can rationalise it, thing, you know. <laughs> but it's a rational thing. Yeah. Well, it's it's whether plan, your rationale fits with... Jeffrey Dahmer rationalised most of his work. Uh, yeah, again, it's whether your rationale is yeah, he's yeah, the same as everyone else's. Sane. Sane. Which is totally subjective. Yeah. But if you if you think that, like, Son of Sam said that your dog told you to do it, that's fine if everyone else's dog is talking to them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because right, yeah, that's yeah. arguable. Well, that they are, rational. aren't they? <laughs> hey! <laughs> My cat Elsie talks to me all the time. That's a cat, not a dog. Oh, everyone yeah, knows cats talk. Yeah, dogs are stupid. <laughs> I've seen Sabrina the Teenage Witch. <laughs> Have you? A cat talk. More often than is healthy for More any adult got male. A talking cat. That's all I'm going to say about that. And nothing about Melissa Joan Hart. Point proven. So during the course of the police investigation, they decided or they, they calculated that Laundrieu had definitely, during the period of the First World War, been in contact with at least 283 women. Oh, God. I've probably been in contact with no, 283 you women. You absolutely have not. You haven't even been in contact, <laughs> I've been in contact with three women. <laughs> you haven't even been... Well, anyway, what are you talking about? What is, what, what is the meaning of in contact? Says hello with... to in the street? Yeah, exactly. In romantic correspondence. Okay, no. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely yeah, Both of not them. Not three between the three yeah. of us. Redact your statement. <laughs> now, of, of whom 72... They could never find. They never managed okay. to trace. Well, arguably, they struggled to trace him. True, they struggled, but they did trace him. And then there was yeah, lots. That's one person. So this is we're talking about. I, more I than suggest 70. they put less effort into each of those seventy odd women than they did into tracing. They're him. not the yeah, but if they found greatest. one woman who'd said, "Did he try to kill you?" and they, yeah. yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been pretty. Uh, yeah. damning, they're evidence. not the greatest. Are we talking about detect? We're talking about the police, are we? We're talking about the They're one the greatest detective. I mean, it, no, the uh, police aren't never, the greatest detectives. We never they? heard of <laughs> 72, 72 women you never heard of ever again. It's like, what they about they their families and their. But again, this is post World War One. Yeah, but so, we're not yeah. talking like in 1322. We're talking about 1922, where there was some sort of. Well, yeah, again, the police. The, the police were few. And there were fewer of them. There's like one cop per town, basically. Mm. Oh, and then right, you've got. Yeah, okay. So there's fewer of them. People well, get married, they move, they change their names. You know, yeah. anything can happen. We don't know. They might have left the country, mm. you know. Or they could have all been murdered and buried in the ground, or burned yeah. in another. Yeah, just seems a bit strange that the the either or is. <laughs> I mean, she might have got married and left town, or she was brutally murdered. It's like, well, well was it? Why is that a toss up? Well, look, look at it, look at it from the other side. They found out that there had been correspondence with two hundred and eighty three women, mm. of whom two hundred and eleven yes women they were able to trace. Right, oh, okay. seventy two they weren't. Mm-hmm. So, okay. you know, they found a lot and then the others they couldn't find for whatever reason, okay. mm-hmm. possibly deceased. So it went to trial and the trial was sensational. Celebrities came yeah. to watch the trial. Wow. Uh, so who were celebrities? Who's a celebrity? So early post-world, mid-20s post-war, celebrities. Post-World War One, France. Oh, yeah. Laurel and Hardy. Again, who you, who, <laughs> yeah, who you and I would think of as celebrities yes. might not be. I could tell you that Maurice Chevalier was there. Oh, right. yeah, well, yeah. he went there. Why on earth would he go to that? Everyone went. Yeah, everyone was exactly. anyone. Le Petamin? <laughs> was he that era? It was filmed, so maybe it would have been. It would yeah. be an early cinema. Yeah, so maybe. <laughs> anyway. Been anyway, but I can tell you that Rudyard Kipling was there. Good really? grief! Now he went. He was in Paris to receive an honorary degree from the Sorbonne, I believe. Right. And uh, yeah, he but attended. But he got a few quotes from that. Hey? Just something to do while you're out there getting meaningless degree. Yeah. Well, <laughs> come for the degree, stay for the massive murder trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The judge Gilbert completely <laughs> lost control of the trial. Oh yeah. By the time it reached its end, there were twice as many people 
in the courtroom than the courtroom had capacity to hold. Oh, good grief. 500 people were in the courtroom. Oh, he had lost control. Completely lost control, yeah. The jury deliberated for, th- for three hours, and it was, they came back with a majority verdict of guilty, but by nine to three. It wasn't even a unanimous after three hours of deliberation. No, I mean, it's not very long, though, is it? Yeah, but we've talked about trials where the jury deliberated for 20 minutes or 30 minutes yeah. to come back. Unanimous. So, so. They deliberated for three hours and still hadn't reached a unanimous decision. Oh yeah. I mean, you'd have thought Did for they? a death sentence you need a unanimous. You know, can't. No, really. You can't be. Yeah, most of us. <laughs> most of us think he's probably done it. He's probably, probably done it. <laughs> Seven to five. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. <laughs> they accepted the judgment of guilty on all eleven murder counts. The jury also found him. Even though three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Even three, three of them are sitting there thumping their fists Why? on the table going he never done it no alright no. let's say he's innocent of ten and guilty of one because you only get to kill, no, be killed true. once yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true yeah. or you would would it be like British law that you only he only needed to kill one to hang yeah. or to be yeah, chopped yeah. up you still only need to be one conviction was it was so, it a binary thing as in did yes. he kill eleven women or eleven people or did rather, he kill one of them or was it 11 counts yeah, that were yeah. individually brought and forward. And if one of those came up yeah, as... If, exactly, yeah, exactly. It it if it was a unanimous vote counts. for one of them, sure, yeah, yeah. he's done. Yeah. No, it would have been 11 counts. 11 counts. In the 11 charges so, of murder. Yeah. Plus, he was also charged with um, the frauds and, as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was found Probably unanimously that. guilty of all of those. And the four years that he was still owed. And he still had four years of hard labour coming to. Yeah. But t- did he get off that? <laughs> in a I way think, yeah I really did I in really a manner did. of speaking he did win yeah. win <laughs> but again it, that wasn't even the, the end of it because then the the, uh, the, the defence got <laughs> got the jury to put their names to a petition for clemency really? what so the jury just delivered the verdict yes of guilty and then before the sentence has been passed in that interim period he got all the jury to sign a, a request to the judge for for clemency a request which Londru didn't sign he refused to sign it but nine of them <laughs> thought he was guilty yeah the th- yeah he's definitely guilty but be nice be nice to him <laughs> he's definitely <laughs> yes yeah, definitely guilty let him off eh let's let him <laughs> off it's fine seems like a nice we haven't guy. got that many men left yeah right yeah. so he might be a vicious killer but yes <laughs> one more one more let's keep the gene wow. pool open wow. but uh, yeah Londru himself said no no I'm innocent I'm not signing a desperate plea, plea for clemency at the 11th hour I didn't do it he eventually signed the plea for clemency but the president said no yes. so 25th of February 1922 a hundred years and a week ago from the time of record I'm giving away when we're recording this a <laughs> hundred years and a week ago right Laundry was taken from his prison cell mm-hmm. outside the prison and here it is the bloody guillotine where he's executed and that time from his prison cell to his beheading was 20 seconds oh gosh that's efficient yeah do they get a bag on their head or do they no sometimes you you, no, no. you see everything I, I, you face down so did he die <laughs> at first yeah <laughs> there's so, a lot yeah. of debate on how long it takes for you to die afterwards is yeah. there so i think yeah, both me and have experiment. both selected Beheading as our death of choice in the past. Have you? In a yeah. conversation. Well, yeah. so I, I chose being ripped apart by trains. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would Going be in the other direction. Yeah. Uh, be- direction. Beheading is. They were, yeah. It'd be better than the trains going in the same direction. <laughs> <laughs> That's just being dragged this along the other train. Behind two trains. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. it's just standing on the it's first just, place. It's just <laughs> travelling by train. <laughs> um, That's why I chose it. Yeah. Um, um, there is experiments been done, and yeah, they the, claim. No, there hasn't. Yeah. Yeah, the right, hands. Yeah. Hands up. Who is doing an experiment? <laughs> Put your hands up if you've had your head <laughs> So we're going to do this to you. Count to five and then answer this yeah. general knowledge question after we've cut your head off. I think there's two... There's two. If you've had your head cut off, nod. <laughs> Blink once for yes. Three, two, one. <laughs> uh, uh, what's the fastest land on the <laughs> The <laughs> <laughs> um, there's two classic experiments, aren't there? There's the one where the person is asked. Two classic experiments. The ones that people classic. already always cite in these ridiculous conversations yes. that we're having. One is um, where the person 
the, the deceased yes. was asked to, I think, blink or for as long as possible or something like that. Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it as long yeah. as they could. And that was about... Thank apparently, you. that was that's been recorded at like six seconds or something. Like that. Apparently, but that could, again, they could they start could yeah. have blinked and then the nervous reaction. I know, yeah. Going, or they could have gone. I'm, I'm gonna. I'll tell them. <laughs> I'm not gonna do what they ask. Yeah. Me. I'm gonna go. Oh, <laughs> if you're still alive, don't make any motion at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'll show them. I'm gonna sing. Oh, what a beautiful morning. And the, yeah. <laughs> uh, the. Hang on, he's gone mad. And then the the other one is uh, <laughs> again. This has got to be apocryphal. But the yeah. the other one is that uh, a, a head fell into the crowd, and, oh, yeah. and into someone, and the head and the head said, "Ow!" That must be. Yeah, that's got to be nonsense. Because they got no fucking exactly, larynx. Yeah. The, you know, no, they've got no lungs, no lungs with no, which nothing. to force air through. Yeah. You know. uh, apparently, I think. And again, I don't know if it's true or not, but there was one one head basket head was slapped and it blushed but I mean yeah and the, the other one that I heard physical. was um, and I can I wish I could remember the guy's name um, but he wrote an account of when after he died uh, <laughs> uh, he was at the beheading to, to test this and the head fell and it fell neatly on the stump right um, and he said he couldn't believe his luck it was just you know just a perfect timing so yeah. the head fell neatly on the stump which stump and well on its only stump it would have been laying down the bit, the bit where it would have been joined to the body. So it just fell back. So onto it yeah, the head. so it just fell, the up. head it just fell went. neatly onto its fleshy parts on the ground. I don't see how. That and he, oh, you, oh, you, you felt the stump. head <laughs> fell up. You mean I, it fell on his yeah, neck? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. it fell, I thought up, it right. fell onto the back on back onto the his neck. shoulders. <laughs> like he's standing up. Went, oh, <laughs> it's a bit. <laughs> right. Okay. Fine, and so he called it. There was a head. And the eyelids opened, and the eyes turned to his face, and fo- and like you can like when someone focuses like a, on you, you can yeah, see yeah, that sure, the eyes that are could have been someone under the platform operating it like a puppet. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. could have been uh, Jim Henson <laughs> responding. I can fly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and he did this several times. He would call the guy's name. And yes. the eyes would open and turn to him, and then after a couple of seconds, it would glaze over and just close oh, yeah, again. Yeah. And, then, and then he would call its name, <laughs> and then it would, the eyes would open, and so it would turn. To his cheek. Like and he said that happened about, I think, three, three or four times over the course of about twenty seconds. And he said, and then the last time, the eyes, he said, the eyes glazed like a dead man's, I mean, and, and didn't move eyes, anymore. That's surely rubbish. And that's pretty haunting if it that's is. the case. Surely rubbish. Yeah, so, uh, it's all bollocks, isn't it? Neck, I don't I mean, from. I don't see why chopped. it wouldn't continue. Why the head wouldn't continue to live afterwards for a few seconds? Yeah, for at well, least the a few not seconds. Getting any oxygen, so it would be pretty quick, and then it would use more oxygen to force. Brain dies of oxygen death after about ten minutes. Up well, until you have it chopped off, <laughs> like you, your neck. If you if you block oxygen, but you'd use if you more, block blood flow to the head through the neck, it, you, it'll be dead in ten minutes. Yeah, but you use but, more energy from and oxygen from you, uh, electrical impulses and mechanical impulses and moving it. And chemical. Yeah, that, you'd use all, everything up pretty quick trying to yeah, move yeah. things around. Yeah, I imagine. I I'm think you've got I th- definitely. I would think you've got a few seconds at least. I'll bear that to in do mind. what <laughs> the, of of living right. to a song. Weirdly, he was buried in the cemetery, and then five years later, he was dug up and buried in an unmarked grave. So, oh, okay. I think that might be just because I didn't want to pay for the plot anymore, the family. Oh, right. But it's, it just seemed a little odd that he would be buried in a marked grave to start with. Mm-hmm. Bearing in mind, he was the blue beard had come by. However, his head did oh. not make its way into the grave. Ah, oh, right. A okay. short coffin. His head, in fact, made its way to the Museum of Death in Hollywood, California. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Of course oh, it did. Where it sits to this day in its mummified state. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. That's a bit macabre. Where's, sorry, where's this? Hollywood. Where, of, of course it is. Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah. I wonder how... This Is, the is it in, like, a the... pickle jar or California's something? California's known it's to be quite warm. It's in a glass case on a little stand. Really? Yeah. Mm, that's terrible. I'm not going to go to that museum. Yeah, well, we we've got Burke's entire body, Burke the killer yeah, in, so. in Scotland. 
Now there was the one thing. Um, the 1968, that there was a sketch that Laundrie had drawn while he was at trial of his oh. oven. <laughs> right, as you do. Uh, uh, yeah, he was doodling. One of the lawyer's daughters, his, Morrow, the defence lawyer, his daughter had produced this sketch that obviously Laundrie was his client, and it had a picture of the oven. And next to the oven was written, "One can burn anything in here." <laughs> Right. Okay. And on the back of it, Laundrie would, uh, wrote the words, uh, This demonstrates the stupidity of the witnesses. Nothing happened in front of the wall, but in the house. And no one really knows what he means by that, but mm. I think the implication is clear. Everything happened in that. He killed them in the house, and he burned them in the oven. Right, okay. Right. Look in the oven. So a lot of people take the reveal of this sketch in 1968 as his final confession. Uh, if you okay. like. uh, yeah. Would that have been like a fire oven? Yeah, it would have been a wood, it was a wood burning I'm, stove. I'm yeah. burn anything in mine. And not like the little pot belly ones that we have in our home. It wasn't and, big. It was not a big not stove. Big. They but were, it, my point is, is if it in my our oven, I don't think I'll be burnt. I mean, I'll slightly singe. But I'm, yeah, not, I mean, I'm not getting rid of. I it couldn't get a cat. I couldn't get rid of a cat in my. What if I'd mean? murdered a cat, I couldn't get rid of the cat. Yeah, I'd have to chop a up a cat. If, let's talk about if you're going to get rid of cats. <laughs> my point People, is, so let's not. It needs to be a very, very, very hot yeah. oven for yeah. for nothing it to does, be left. Yeah, yeah you need to get into four figures to get rid of bone. <laughs> yeah, I've got a four figured oven. <laughs> um, well, the oven itself was purchased. Oh, it was sold at auction in 1923. A year. After the execution, and the um, so the, it was a hot ticket. Uh, yeah, mm. so the guy who put him, <laughs> the man who bought it <laughs> wanted to take it on an exhibition to Italy to mm. show it off. Uh, he took it to Turin, out of French jurisdiction, but fortunately the authorities in Turin said no, and they banned the ex- exhibition. <laughs> Is it the case though that the oven only came into real interest in 1968? Well, the sketch- when he actually confessed. Because of what he wrote on the sketch, that's him taken as a confession. Yes. He maintained his innocence at the time. Yeah. Whereas the oven, oh. in and of itself, was... Oh, uh, uh, okay. A so their assumption, interest. ultimately... They assumed it was, was in the oven. Yeah. yeah. So they said, okay. well, let's all talk about the oven. And then in it 68, years later, said, oh, it this, was right. this implies that he did burn them in the right, oven. Right, right. Apparently. And that would explain why he didn't travel wildly around. If he's got a nice big oven. He's got a bit of an oven to carry around. Just invite them back. Yeah, yeah. Con them out of the money and then burn them. Do you want to get in my oven? (laughs) Marianne? Uh, In 1944, John Carradine did a a film, very loosely based on the story, but the classic is 1972 with Richard Burton. Richard Burton. Richard Burton. Want to come and see my oven? (laughs) Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what it was like. Um, yeah, we've just watched the uh, trailer of the <laughs> Bluebeard. It's I mean, it looks. I don't think it'd get made today. In fact, they. I'm talking about the the. Would it get made today? The subject matter is a bit safe too. to say we have different values today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think they would make a movie about Bluebeard, but whether they would make that movie, I'm not yeah, sure. Out. There were lots of new verbs, weren't there? Oh, there were. Because uh, <laughs> he killed a lot of people in the film, and one of them was... Uh, one he shot, one he drowned. One he coffined. He coffined. And that's apparently closing the coffin and one keeping he it closed. he chandeliered. He chandeliered yes. one of them, yeah, by <laughs> dropping a chandelier on him. Which isn't a euphemism, it's she literal. He was chandeliered. One he uh, falconated. Falconated, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. definitely a euphemism. That's, uh, he killed her with a falcon. A falcon attacked her for some reason. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it, it wasn't great. It didn't look great. And his beard looked a bit false. <laughs> it wasn't blue. No. So there's two films that are famous. Mm-hmm. Now, Have you watched one of them? I don't know. I've watched. I have watched a film. I'm I don't know if it's. I'm going to assume famous. I've watched a film. I've, <laughs> I'm going to assume because I've met you that you watched the French language Landru by Claude Chabrol. You don't know me at all. <laughs> did you? See, no, actually, I did. I tried watching that. My French so isn't did. quite <laughs> isn't quite go. up to par. I couldn't find it with an English subtitle. Uh, okay. Um, so you had a go at it. Yeah, I had a go at it. But what, I what year is that? That's uh, 1963. Hmm. 
it's famous, but it's yep. contentious because, first of all, it ignored four of the murders completely and made the out that the other ones were all so very it was rich a, and attractive. Women. Adaptation. Uh, it's, it's Hollywood. Adaptation. But it was yep. called Landru, so it's based directly on the uh, case. Okay. Mm. Now, um, Chabrol, the director, was sued by Fernand Segret, Landru's mistress, um, okay. or last mistress, I should say, because she didn't like the way she was portrayed in the movie. Oh, right. <laughs> she was portrayed in the movie. And she actually won some damages, not a lot. Mm, wow. Well. Um, but the one that's more famous uh, another one. In, for English speakers yes. was... Um, Carry on, Blue Pit. <laughs> was in 1947, a yes. film called Monsieur Verdu, ah. which is Charlie Chaplin. That is the oh, one right, I've right. seen. Oh, okay. okay. But um, again, it's loosely based. Um, is it good? It is good. Yeah, it's really it's good a, fun. It's a, yeah. it's a comedy. Oh, yeah, yeah. About a bank what? clerk who murders women. <laughs> it, does he play it? No. Yeah, he plays the title. Yeah. Oh, does he? Yeah. I thought he'd uh, foil the plot, kind of. No, he plays the killer. Ooh, wow. Yeah, his comic timing is absolutely exquisite. Mm. Yeah, he's so precise. It's yeah, yeah. wonderful to it's watch. Great, great. Yeah. Where can I see that on a DVD? Yeah, <laughs> oh, really. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's adapted from a script that he bought that was written by Orson Welles. Mm, right. mm. That was funny. Yeah, Very it funny. is funny. Yeah, yeah it's witty and yeah. charming. And you know, uh, I mean, as long as I need would, to watch would have to have been. A, a wit you know? and a charmer, yeah. Feel as I need to watch it because I can't see the where he's yeah. wrenching the humour out. But and they do kind of, they do stick in some classic kind of Charlie Chaplin slapstick moments. Yeah. Where he falls sure, backwards yeah. out of a window sure, on the first yeah. floor. Yeah. And it, it's. It's. So, onto a woman's. It, it's it's a lovely off. moment. He just flips backwards. Yeah. But. It, nobody else could have fallen quite so well as yes, he did. Right, yeah. Yeah. Well, he made his. He broke into vaudeville as a professional drunk. Not yeah, that was his act yeah, yeah. to fall around and fall over things. What's so, your act? I'm good at falling over. I'm good at falling over. You're hired. That's how he got into the movies. <laughs> well done, Charlie Chaplin, the greatest serial killer of all. <laughs> <laughs> Fact. That's all for this time. If you want to know more about what we've talked about on this episode, then just Google it or something. You can listen to all of our previous episodes on our website. That's www.truecrimediary.co.uk. Please remember to leave a review on your podcast provider if you can, or you can email us. That's stuff at truecrimediary.co.uk. My thanks to Jed and Rue and to all of you for listening. And we'll see you again on next date in our True Crime Diary.